Hi, Warriors. I'm Jimmy. And I'm James. And you're watching this Friday's feature edition of Warrior TV News. First, Lindsay and David go to the softball team and talk about their upcoming season. Then later, Megan and Kate take a closer look at the musical. And finally, Noel and Riley head to the Diamond to talk to the baseball team about the start of their season. The softball season is starting up. Lindsay and David head over to the players and coaches to see how they plan for the season to go. The Lady Warriors softball team is now swinging into action and working hard to have a winning season. Warrior TV goes to the coaches and players to get an insight on the upcoming season. This year we plan to be a lot more aggressive on the base path. We have a lot of speed this year and so we're excited to take extra bases, uh, catch teams off guard, and be really aggressive offensively. We do a lot of off-season work. We're in the hitting barn uh, in the fall and the winter. Um, we're uh, uh, working with them on different types of uh, drills. We work with them, obviously, with th courses like APC or uh, other lifting stuff that um, uh, Mr. Harris does to help us get ready for season. Um, there's no really off-season anymore for any sport, for that matter. We do a number of things before the season starts to get ready. Uh, first of all, we try to build a lot of team chemistry so that on the field it happens really naturally. We do a lot of team building. We go to Cincinnati and spend time together uh, building our team bond. And then obviously we practice. We have one scrimmage before the season starts, and we do a lot of position-specific work so that everybody's getting in the techniques that they need working together um, and building communication on the field. This group is talented um, and it's been something I've noticed a lot, the three years that I've been here it has uh, been better each year. We have a really good core group of girls and um, a lot of them have come back to be a part of us again this year which I think is beneficial. Our sophomores are better than they were when they were freshmen. Our juniors are better when they were sophomores uh, and on and on so I think that's a big plus for the program. Both Coach Mitchell and Coach Phipps are able to apply their skills from the classroom to the instruction of their athletes. Those who teach have a lot easier job of being a coach. Uh, you understand not just how to get across objectives and goals and this is what I want to accomplish today. I mean, that's something that a teacher knows how to do and a coach has to know how to do. Uh, but there's intangibles that you can't really measure that a teacher just sort of brings to the table that a regular non-teacher can. Being a coach but teaching at the middle school is really fun because I get to teach future softball players. Uh, I also just, I teach PE so I get to be with athletes all the For time and I think that kind of my expectations with athletes is trickles down even at the middle school level but I think that's cool for them to see. As a coach, as a teacher, you've got to love what you do. You've got to be enthused about what you do. Um, you're not going to be a good teacher if you don't love coming to work every day. Um, if you don't love working with students, um, you're not going to be a very good coach if you don't love your sport, if you don't love wanting to see these kids get better and, and love watching them be successful. After talking with the coaches, Warrior TV goes to the players to hear about their expectations for the upcoming season. I've been playing since I was around six years old, so about 13 years now. Um, the one thing I enjoy the most about it is I love the adrenaline rush on the field and I just love the family I make with all my teammates. I've been playing since I was five years old, so 13 years. It's taught me how to build better relationships and be more about others than myself. Softball's taught me a lot. It's, I've learned to respect people. I've learned to have great leadership and just sportsmanship no matter what. When January hits, we're hitting weight room, we're hitting conditioning. We go to weights with Coach Harris and we go to the barn and hit or field and throw and just get ready for the season. I would say our chemistry this year has grown a ton. We, we just all around love each other and we want to have fun and we want to work hard and we're all competitive so it's, it's a really funny atmosphere that we're all around. I think this year we've been a lot more like a family. That's something that I know myself, Addie and Maddie as seniors, we've really emphasized that we want to feel like a family. I really want to have a winning record as a team. I want everybody to improve on their hitting and their fielding and I think we should be able to get more wins this year. So we want to get stronger in the way we're in. We want to get faster in conditioning. We want to work hard on defense and offense. We need to hit. 
The Lady Warriors softball team is working hard to have a successful season by stealing bases and throwing curveballs at their opponents. Make sure to come out to support them at their next home game on April 10th. Varsity and JV step up to bat at 5.30 p.m. From the Athletic Hallway, I'm Lindsay, here with David, Warrior TV News. I've come to realize that like sports aren't everything, but the relationships you build with people are and the memories you make with them. Warriors. Ultimate Frisbee Club will play in the state tourney on May 5th and 6th. For more info, check them out at whitelandultimateclub.weebly.com or talk to Mr. McLean at the North Campus. Come and support your Warriors. This year's musical is Music Man. Megan and Kate take a closer look and talk to the leads on how the production is going. This year's spring musical, Beloved Classic The Music Man, stars seniors Bradley Bishop as Harold Hill and Marianne Martin as Marianne Peru. Warriors TV goes center stage with the performers themselves to get a glimpse of how the music man is coming along and how musical theater has played a role in their high school careers. So in musicals, there's always different types of music that you don't learn in others. There's just a new show that you have never met and you get to actually experience a new chapter or a new story you get to become a different character than you were before they have helped me develop kind of like a, a new sense of character and confidence i've formed a lot of friendships and just bonds do you get to meet so many people that you probably would have never met if you didn't do theater you get to do something that you love or experience for the first time that you haven't before and miss smith does a great job of directing and teaching you how to do stuff after receiving the exposition of this year's spring musical from its leads warrior tv calls back director miss Smith for more dialogue on The Music Man and its impending success. The Music Man is going to showcase the talent of our actors because it, it has some challenging acting moments. Oh, yes. It I definitely agree. is a beautiful musical with great singing. Marianne is one of the most brilliant singers and musicians. It's been fun to watch her start to grow and dive into the acting part of herself. Brad has been just a great experience to watch. Such a beautiful, talented, innately thoughtful human being come from his freshman year to his senior year and grow and change. Both have definitely improved as performers and certainly have grown as people over the four years I've known them. Really, really blessed to work with such lovely human beings. The Music Man is sure to be a smashing success thanks to Brad, Marianne, Miss Smith, and all the other talented hard workers involved. Come see all the talent and hard work in action May 11th through the 13th. From outside of the WCHS Auditorium, I'm Megan Brown, here with Kate, Warrior TV News. Hello, Whiteland Community High School, and welcome to the RDM 5-on-5 pregame show brought to you exclusively by Whiteland Community High School's Riley Dance Marathon, reminding you that that 5-on-5 tournament is tonight, Friday, April 6th, in the main Glen Ray Gymnasium and Auxiliary Gyms right here at Whiteland Community High School. Tickets are only $5, and we are here to tell you all about the formidable WCHS staff team. I'm play-by-play -play announcer Mr. Clausen, and with me is my color analyst, Mr. Loudermuck. Mr. Loudermuck, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. You know, it's going to be a great, uh, great overall event. Mm -hmm. I agree. This atmosphere is going to be riotous, and we've got to look at the starting five for the WCHS staff team because they are quite a force to be reckoned with. Starting with your number one, Mr. Brian Lukic, coming from you from the WCHS math department. This man is a task manager. He is a distributor. He's the advanced placement point guard. What can you tell us about Mr. Lukic? What can any student team going up against him expect to see? Uh, you can expect not a lot of scoring. Okay. I think uh, one of his key stats was uh, higher GPA points per game than uh, than the ba than the basketball, but uh, I think it was 1.8. And uh, you know, but I tell you what, if he can contribute that one point, that might be the point that uh, sends them on to the next round. That's a fantastic point. Okay. Next up in our starting lineup from the w WCHS staff team. From the WCHS admin, we've got assistant principal, Mr. Brent Holman. Now, Mr. Holman's going to be your speed guy, relentless, won't give you an inch, ankle breaker this one. What are your thoughts on Mr. Holman here, Mr. You know, Adamo? he's missed all the shots he didn't take. Mm. 
And uh, rumor has it that he's so fast that that is the reason why he has no hair. So uh, he runs about five miles a day. The dude runs like the wind, uh, colors of the wind if you're going Pocahontas style. And uh, he, he's one heck of a ball player. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay, coming after Mr. Holman, we've got Mr. Mike Gillespie, also from the WCHS math department. This man is a tactician on the hardwood. He's quite the statistical genius. He can see a play develop before the ball is even in his hands. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Mr. Gillespie. What can people expect? You know, former basketball coach, uh, he's very smart uh, in the basketball realm as well. If you don't pay attention to him, he will sneak back door. Some say he's even a cherry picker. Uh, so you got to watch out for him. He's, uh, he's pretty deadly. That's outstanding. Now we've got to go inside here with the WCHS staff team, and we're starting with the enforcer of this group, and that's, of course, Associate Principal Mr. Benji Betts. This wow. man is a mountain of a defender. He will not allow you a step, one foot's step, into the paint. Uh, what do we got to hear for, on Mr. Betts, Mr. Loudon? You know, mountain indeed, and uh, his nickname was the hatchet, which would make sense because you have to have small hands to handle a hatchet, and I think that's what Benji has. And, uh, you know, it's, it's also in fear to the mighty axe. But uh, I tell you what, you've got five fouls. He uses all of them. And for someone who likes to dive into the bleachers uh, like he does, you know, have your popcorn ready. For Outstanding, guy. yes. Popcorn at the ready. Rounding out this formidable group of five stellar WCHS staff members, we've got Mr. Keith Harrison, co-department chair of the WCHS English Language Arts Department. This man has quite the resume. Basketball in high school, prep school, college. He can hit the shot from anywhere on the court. He's got a teardrop uh, that we haven't seen this side of a 1970s public service announcement campaign. <laughs> uh, Mr. Harrison is perhaps one of the scrappiest basketball players uh, that we can boast uh, talent-wise on this roster. Tell us about Mr. Harrison. Absolutely. You know, as a matter of fact, I think he was also talented in one of the McGruff crime scenes back in the 80s and you know he just he's all over the place and if, if you're not careful he'll step back out drain the three I think he went three for three when he was playing the Wizards earlier in I'm no Mr. Gillespie but I believe that's 100 <laughs> percent yeah <laughs> that's that's absolutely right uh, I believe so and Heath is if he doesn't get you on the court he'll definitely get you with a smile so don't let the smile fool you uh, he'll definitely uh, make you pay for he'll it. He'll kill you with kindness and with that sweet, sweet jumper. Sweet. All right, well, that's that starting five for the WCHS staff team. Remember, you can see them and many other teams represented tonight at the five-on-five -five tournament to benefit Whiteland Community High School's Riley Dance Marathon tonight, Friday, April 6th, starting at 6 p.m. in the main Glenry Gymnasium and also the Auxiliary Gym. Cost to participate is $5, and Warriors, you don't want to miss this one. That's all we've got for you on this pregame show. Until next time, Warriors, have a good one. want to hear better singing than this, come to see the musical. Dates are May 11th, 12th, and 13th. We Warriors Learning Center is a Christian-based preschool located on 31, right by the subway. Not a lot of people may know that the Peer Helpers Program visits here as part of their weekly service. Warrior TV speaks with those involved in the Peer Helpers Program and one of the teachers at the We Warriors Learning Center to see how this little place has influenced both Peer Helpers and young children. My role in Peer Helpers is that the program began about 28 years ago, and um, my role is that I am the sponsor and the instructor. I'm a senior in the Peer Helpers Program and Peer Helpers Program is basically a class that we get to volunteer around the community. We have chosen um, two or three different um, places to go on Thursday. We call it Service Thursday and We Warriors was one of our um, chosen um, places to go to. We go in, um, to this preschool play games, color, um, help the teachers there with their activities for the students. After hearing what the Peer Helpers program is about and why they go to the We Warriors Learning Center, Warrior TV meets with the director, Carla Walters, to discuss 
how the peer helpers and we warriors have impacted each other. We have three teachers, um, myself, Mrs. Tomey, and Mrs. Wiest, and we also have um, two parent volunteers. One is Mrs. Officer and Mrs. Brooks, who's here somewhere today. We opened in 2015. I've been employed since then. Um, I'm the director and as well a teacher. I, uh, we originally came from a church ministry, so all of us teachers that are here have been together for 21 years. We'd like to say we are a Christian-based ministry. I hope that our, hope there are lights shining for them um, and also giving them the opportunities to see what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis working with young children. Because we all, we all love our job and um, it's not a, job where we get paid a whole lot of money we do it because we you know we love the children and we just want to share the children with with you guys and hope that you enjoy being with them too i think the impact that high school students have on younger kids is being a role model and being a support to to them um, in their young, young in their young minds um, to know what it is to um, look up to someone and um, I think also that the role that the, stu the young students have on the high school is it shows them that they do need to be a role model and they do have an influence on young minds. I think peer has impacted the community in a great way. I think we just get to go out there and just try to show them what WCHS is really about and maybe get to be a role model for the kids that are up and coming. After hearing that students of an older age can play a big factor in molding the younger kids, Warrior TV speaks with peers and teacher about their favorite memory working with each other. In the past, we've had um, a family fun day that's been put on by the peer helper. That was a really, really fun thing that they did. Um, it was open to the community as well as all of our families, so um, that was fun. Um, they had Christmas parties with them where they've where the peers actually did the, the games and the activities and they bought them all little gifts. Um, that was fun. I love working with the kids at We Warriors because of how young they are. They're just so much fun and they give you a little burst of energy throughout your day. And just recently at We Warriors, I had a really memorable experience when we did some Olympic Games type stuff and it was just so cute. They got to like march around with little like paper torches and we did like ice skating where they had like paper on their feet and they skated around. My favorite memory with We Warriors was last year when one of the teachers um, lost her life in her battle with cancer and um, the relationship that peer helpers had with her um, was positive and so they did a memorial for her um, and I think that was my most precious memory is just the, you know, again, the, the relationships that people have with each other. Mm -hmm. Sounds as if the Warriors from the Learning Center and the high school have made a greater impact on each other. If you would like to help support and grow the We Warriors Learning Center, you can follow their Facebook page to see more information on their Dine to Donates and when to register for next fall. If you like volunteering with children, you should talk to your counselor to sign up for the Peer Helpers program next year. From outside the We Warriors Learning Center, I'm Brooke, Warrior TV News.
Following the Warriors' first few games, Nolan and Riley head over to the baseball diamond and get the players' and coaches' insights on the beginning of the season. The varsity baseball team here at Whiteland has had lots of success in past seasons gaining them the honor of being the school's most decorated sport. But they had a disappointing end to the season last year, losing by just two runs in the sectional championship and they are looking to bounce back. Warrior TV heads over to get perspectives from coaches and players on the preparations being made and their goals for the upcoming season. Well, overall, every year, you know, it's a new challenge to start with a new group of guys. Um, all, always working to get the most out of the kids that we can, you know, and, and put the best team, best product out there. Well, I think this year, I think we're looking at being a little more aggressive on the base paths. Um, also, implementing the bunt. I've been around for a while. I, I don't like the bunt. <laughs> Never have. Still don't really like it. But uh, I think it's part of the game that I need to, as a coach, I need to emphasize and call a little bit more. Um, but just overall aggressiveness, you know, benchmarks, you know, obviously winning a county, uh, conference title, 20 wins is always a, an attainable goal. And then obviously you want to make a deep run at the, at the end of the year. This year's group, I think they're a pretty close-knit group so far. I think they like being around each other, um, you know, and uh, I think that's a big part of it. Coach Sherry also went into depth about the team's practice methods and preparations being made. Yeah, normal practice uh, when it's not raining and uh, we can get on the field. Uh, you know, we usually try to have some type of skill development, you know, whether it's defensive skill or offensive skill, some type of team. You know, if it's, okay, we're working on bunt coverages or situational hitting. Um, and, and then, you know, we finish with pitchers and so forth a lot of the times. You know, typically, we try to hit all facets of the game a little bit each day. But it always starts with the guys on the, on the mound. If those guys will throw strikes and do what we think they're capable of doing, they're going to keep us in a lot of baseball games and we'll have a chance to win down the stretch. And you know what, that's all you can ask for, really. But it, it, the key is can, can guys on the mound do their job. We try to implement, you know, you know, fall throwing and then rest for a couple months. And then we start up in January. Well, weight training is pretty much year-round. Uh, should be an APC with Coach Harris. Uh, it's highly recommended. So. You know, just it, it's it's pretty much a year-round thing. I, I just I want the, our guys to compete every day, no matter what. After speaking with Coach Sherry, Warrior TV proceeds to get player perspectives on preparations being made and their goals for the upcoming season. Team goals, I would say another thing of consistency. Last year we started off like ten and two, and then lost one game, and things just started going downhill from there. So I think just overall keeping uh, consistency as a team and staying together and because last year I feel like a couple guys would get on each other and everybody just start getting mad and it was just it got unhealthy for a while. Team goals are to win sectional and win conference. Most important part of baseball is probably throwing strikes because if you can't if you don't throw strikes and your team can't make plays and then the whole, whole game goes downhill so throwing strikes is the biggest thing. The players also touch base on keys for success and changes that have been put in place for the upcoming season. You're going to lose tough games in baseball, and you got to be able to uh, you got to be able to bounce back from those games. Or even when you're at a high and you're winning a bunch, you know you got to keep your mind still at the same level, and uh, you know keep keep our focus, keep consistent. Uh, the team's looking to improve, working together as a team, focusing on winning games and making more plays in the field, not making too many errors. We've changed a lot of things, and one of the main things we've changed is um, staying focused every day and coming ready to practice, and no jacking around, and just focusing on hitting more because that's one of our weaknesses, so we need to get better at that. The keys for success this season will be throwing strikes, making plays, and just doing the fundamental things of baseball. I just think overall the team as a whole is coming together and really wants to win this year. The varsity baseball team has big goals for this upcoming season, and they have put in the work to achieve them. Make sure to come out and support them at their first home game on April 10th at 5.30 p.m. From outside the varsity baseball diamond, I'm Riley, here with Nolan, Warrior TV News.